This lesson is about refrigeration gauges and their relationship to the pressure temperature chart. Here we see a set of typical gauges that you uh, would have on your manifold gauge set. Yours may be a, a little bit different with a few more rings here, but they all work in the same manner. The first thing we'll look at is um, the outer ring of this, the low side pressure gauge here. Um, it goes from 0 to 500 psi. Uh, its working range is 300 psi. This is uh, the pressure portion of the gauge and um, it does indicate the pressure of the refrigerant when you're connected to the low side um, pressure port. And the high side pressure gauge is the same type of gauge except it goes up to 800 psi. The really cool thing about the gauges here is the inner rings and you'll notice that there's a ring designated as R22 and then there's an inner ring designated as R410A. These inner rings don't indicate pressure, they indicate temperature. The um, first one we'll take a look at is the R22. We'll see how this works. So you're going to connect your uh, gauge up to the low side pressure port and whatever that pressure might be, um, your needle is going to roll around and it is going to, let's say, say for example, fall right here at 100 psi. Um, as you note, as you'll see, the um, when the needle indicates 100 psi, it will fall across the temperature, inner temperature rings right here. And it, and if you'll notice at the uh, point where it crosses the R22 temperature ring, it looks to be about 58, 59 degrees right here on the uh, inner temperature ring. So how does that relate to the pressure temperature chart? Well, let's take a look at our pressure temperature chart. This is the one from our uh, textbook and um, we're going to look at the R22 column and we're going to find 100 psi which falls in this range. So 100 psi is going to be right about here and if you follow that across to our temperature column you'll see that 100 psi saturation temperature for R22 is about 58, 59 degrees. So what you have is a um, pressure temperature chart right here on your gauge. It gives you your pressure and the and the inner ring on your pressure and temperature gauges shows you um, the the pressure temperature relationship just like the pressure temperature chart. So let's take a look at another example and we will go over to our high side gauges and let's say our dial is at 300 psi for an R410A system. Now the R410A system, um, the, I'm sorry, the R410A ring and temperature ring is indicated by pink so we will bypass or overlook the R22 and we'll go down here and you see that it falls right at about 96 degrees on the R410A temperature ring. Let's go take a look at our chart again. So we need to find our R410A column, which is the pink column, and we're going to look for right around 300 psi. And we follow that across to the temperature column and we're right there at 99, 98 degrees and you'll see here that um, we're pretty close here on the gauge. So what I want you to remember is our um, pressure gauges are really a, a pressure temperature chart and you're going to be looking at temperatures more than pressures. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's review. The outer ring of the pressure gauges reads PSI G which is the pressure of the refrigerant. The inner rings read corresponding temperatures of the refrigerant at saturation temperature just like our pressure temperature chart. Um, our gauges are really a PT chart and we're going to be looking at the temperatures more so than we're going to look at the pressure with these gauges. Now if you have any questions about module 3 refrigeration, uh, saturation temperatures, superheat, subcooling, PT charts, gauges, uh, this is really important for you to grasp so please send me an email with any questions go to the uh, lesson forum 
and post them there. And uh, if you're really stuck, we'll schedule a time to uh, do a Skype video cast and we'll uh, get you through this module. So thank you very much and we will talk with you on the next lesson.